Athletes Unlimited is the only individual championship in volleyball, and the competition is intense. Each week, a draft led by players picking teams from amongst some of the best professionals in the sport reshuffles the deck. Teamwork reigns supreme as players climb the leaderboard. Brace for another electrifying clash of the world's fiercest volleyball competitors. Match two starts now on ESPN. Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN, fueled by Gatorade. We're at Legacy Park in Mesa, Arizona for our second match of tonight's doubleheader, and it's a fantastic one. Team Hentz versus Team Edmund. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad you've joined us. I'm Anne-Marie Anderson alongside Missy Whittemore. Key Michael will be joining us a little bit later, and I'm so excited about this match, Missy, because these two teams were built very differently. Yeah, you better believe it. You take a look at Team Hints, and while they may have one of the biggest arms in the game, if you take a look at their title, Team Hints, it gives you a hint as to how they're defined, and that has a lot to do with defense. Across the net, we're going to have Team Edmund, who is admittedly a big banger, loves to go up and take big rips at the ball, but they're going to have to match the defensive hints in order to hang in this one. Well, you talked about the offense of Edmund. She has been fantastic. All four captains this week were on her team last week. And that says so much to the success of her team a weekend ago. So she's having to pivot, put her captain's hat on this weekend and see if they can figure out how to work out the wrinkles. A lot of that has to do with the offense of Leah Edmond, who last night had 14 kills, continues to really put this team on her back. You see her swinging there in purple last weekend, now in that gold jersey, the only player to return as a captain. And she was the leading captain coming into the weekend. On the other side of the net, we mentioned one of the biggest arms in the game. Well, that just happens to be Betty De La Cruz. This is a player you have to go all the way back to the first weekend of last season for her not to have been in that captain's jersey. That is how dominant she has been in the league. Again last night, 20 kills and her 23rd MVP honor of the year. I have a feeling things could change quickly. She might be right back in that captain's chair. And let's take a look who fills out the rest of the lineups for these teams. For Team Hens, Rosenthal in the middle has been really fantastic first week as well. Rosenthal has impressed me because of the fact that she has such a great two-way middle. She's not just defense, she's not just offense. She's the complete package. She had eight kills last night, but without a single error. That is a 571 hitting efficiency, and she draws so much attention with her defense. Teams have to think about that block. They're trying to hit around her. And on the other side, Molly McCage, number five in gold. She's been here every season. She was hitting that slide behind the setter with authority Friday night. Well, when you look at where she's chosen in the draft on the regular, it speaks to how highly she's thought of by the other players at AU. Because we saw Leah Edmond with her first pick take a setter, Alicia Childers, go ahead and get that setter, which is vitally important, and her very next pick, Molly McCage. That yep. is how, it, how valued Molly McCage is in this league, has a great reputation with the other players. You know, it amazes me that Leah Edmond, her team last night was only able to grab one set, didn't get any, or excuse me, on Friday night, didn't get those aggregate points. And yet coming into this evening, she still sat at the top of the leaderboard. That's that speaks right. to what a great statistical, a number of great statistical performances that she's been able to put together. That's right. Only one set as they faced Team Hilly. Of course, yes. Hilly up atop the leaderboard as well. Top four players at the end of this week, statistically, will be the top four captains next week. For now, let's get the ball in the air with one of the best servers from Friday night, mm -hmm. Valentine Anderson. Childress outside. Brooke Nunneviller digs the first ball. And Betty De La Cruz bangs the first. And what we also notice in this matchup, which is a little sad, is that she goes right into the corner over Namaris, the libero for Team Gold. And that is a player who they have been paired together on the regular. That is her sidekick. Betty and Namaris love to play together. And this week we're seeing them across the net from one another. Yeah, that's something different. But I'll tell you, she's got a couple of great libros to play with, not only Morgan Hentz, but Brooke Nunaveller. For people just joining us and learning, 44 world-class athletes, international stars on four teams. I mentioned the top four point leaders at the end of the matches on Monday are the next week team captains. On Tuesday, they have the toughest job. They need to draft their friends, opponents, <laughs> and teammates and make a team. 
Uh, that coffin corner again, this uh, time by Zaskia. Man, there's no defense for that, is there? And we've seen two different players now for Team Hens. Just, just drill it into the, not really drill it, it's really a soft shot, but into that corner so deep. Betty De La Cruz, terrifying serve. Told ya, <laughs> ace serve off of Betty. I mean, two of the best servers in the league. When you take a look at Valentin Anderson, who just served a moment ago, and now De La Cruz goes back to the service line. That is enough to put fear in opponents. The service receive line to have to face those two servers so early in the match before you've really kind of found your groove. That time, you can see it in the toss. Just going to go a little bit longer. There's so many great players here. Who do you see in this leaderboard coming up hot? Yeah, these are kind of my stock on the rise. I think, obviously, you're splitting hairs with Betty. She's always high, but I just think, obviously, she'll be a captain again next week. Valentin Anderson set a record five aces last night in a single match. And then you see there, Brooke Nunaviller. To me, her stock is on the rise, and it's not just because of the fact that she can kill balls. But she actually digs so many balls. It is like having two Liberos on the floor. So the complete package that she brings to the court, of course, Hilly and Chasse, those right. two just continue to score points like no one else. And with each other, and I mm -hmm. thought it was really interesting, Morgan Hentz and Brooke Nunnevoe played against each other at college in Stanford and Oregon in the Pac-12 consistently. And she wanted Nunaviller because she said, with the defense, with yes. Betty De La Cruz, Nunaviller, and Hens, they'll dig everything and pass nails. And it it's true. You were quick to point to Jenna Rosenthal at the start of this match. Yeah. Hey, here's a player we need to keep an eye on. How about that block? I love it. Willis' serve was tough. McCage. Oh, excuse me, not McCage. That was Fanning. Chase down. Nice pick up, and then from the back court. Childress goes to the front. That's the crossbody we were talking about earlier in terms of an attack. Yeah, that right arm swinging across her body into left back. Really well done here by Fanning. You see the first swing out of the back row by Luke. So that is actually another player who you'd have to consider in terms of stock on the rise. She had 16 kills last night. Yeah. Really a breakout performance. Big Excuse time. me, I keep saying last night, Friday night. We, I, we know, when you say last yes. night, we know the last <laughs> night they played. The last night they played. Games are Friday, Sunday, and Monday. Draft happens Tuesday, and they get to work Wednesday yeah. with their new squad. Here's Katie Luke's. Warren Hens puts up the set. Melanz was like, ah, get there, Augusto. Here's a really smart shot by Brooke Nunaville. And I think that's one of the things she's learning from being on this team with Betty and just the experience on this team is you don't have to hit every ball hard. She's oh, just yeah. watching how smart these players are playing. Absolutely. She's crafty. She spent some time with Morgan Hens on the national team this summer overseas playing in Turkey. And it was really interesting to see this pick to me because Morgan Hens feels like, you know, she could do anything, but she knows that the defense, as you pointed out. Yeah. And I'm a big jinx because a beautiful <laughs> ace. In true Leah Edmond fashion, boy, Leah Edmond is a competitor. She does yep. not like to lose. She impacts the game from all areas of the court. You mentioned they won the second set the other day. She was very irritated after the first and animated talking to her team. Nice pass by Nunaviller. Rosenthal Ooh. buries the ball. There's the pass you were talking about. Yep. There's the touch of Brooke Nunaviller. I mean, talk about a solid serve receive line. Betty De La Cruz, Brooke Nunaviller, and Morgan Hintz. Look at this. Right on top of the setter. And Jenna Rosenthal, what did we say? A true two way middle. We've seen the stuff block and we've seen a kill already early in this match. I'll be interested to see if, this, if Childress tries to exploit the matchup with the smaller Valentina Anderson. Mm -hmm. Katie Luke's hard off the block. Another perfect pass. Rosenthal kind of bangs it off the head in a nice finish. I 
like it. That's Valentin Anderson up at the net here on the conclusion of this play. The big rip from Rosenthal sets it all up. But look at Valentin Anderson, a rare opportunity for a kill, and she'll take it. Nunaviller's serve to Leah Edmond. An ace for Nunaviller. We've seen this strategy used in other matches where teams have really gone at Leah Edmond. For every ace during this year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. Heading into this week, 280 trees have been committed, and another 10 off of Nunaviller's ace. Hence goes back to Betty. Outside to Luke's, that rip of an arm. It's a whip, isn't it? I yeah. mean, she gets that arm through so quick. And she didn't look super comfortable offensively a week ago. But with Childress, she seems to have really found her confidence. Childress knows exactly how to get her the ball, and that time from well off the net. Fanning serving. Rosenthal, that time not over. This is a really nice front line for Team Edmonds. I feel like Rosenthal just overran that one a little bit, went right past it, and then missed there. But right now, Valentin Anderson not afraid to push some balls to the middle, really trying to establish some balance early. Not at all. You see the leaderboard on the left side of your screen. It is dynamic. It will change. An update during the action. Molly McCage and Coyazzo on the block. Great lift by Fanning on that pass. Betty head hunting down the line. The first swing, Betty was blocked in the angle. And as her team's playing that ball up, you see her take her eye off the play and she's taking a look across the net, oh, checking yeah. out the defense, what's going on. Next swing, right down the line. De La Cruz is so skilled mm. going down the line with her hand contact. Here's Rosenthal. Behind the service line, Molly McCage is up front. They can't get the ball to her because her passing isn't on point. Outside to De La Cruz. Katie Luke's <laughs> a revelation again. She said, you really, you didn't want to talk about me in the That's open? That's right. That's right. After those 16 kills. Yeah. And this is an especially pleasing point because it comes off of a dig in the Betty De La Cruz swing. Anytime you can convert a swing from Betty De La Cruz into a point for your team, you feel like you've really accomplished something. Absolutely. Set goes back. Zaskia blocked. And again, it's Luke's and McCage. Kitty Luke. I feel like Katie Luke's maybe also really comfortable this week playing alongside Gabby Blossom in yeah. gold. They've spent their last season together at San Diego. It's small things like that that yes. it can add to the comfort level of a player and allow them to really settle in. Absolutely. And while Childress is setting right now, Gabby Blossom is another weapon they have. Luke's, I feel like every time she swings, she's going to convert. Outside, De La Cruz. <sighs> OT, baby, over the top and to that over same corner. Over the top, to the corner. They just continue to find that deep corner. Here she is. Keep an eye on her. Keep an eye on her. And there it is, the change up. You know, I just love the fact that there's never two shots the same with yes. De La Cruz. It's going to change. Absolutely. I agree. That has been the play for Team Gold. The connection between Childress and McCage. You've been asking for it. Moments yes. ago, Ann Marie said they got to get her the ball. They got to get a pass. Well, that's what it looks like when the pass is there. McCage on the slide. It's really a thing of beauty. She's so devastating mm. on the slide, and her connection with Childress is so strong. Mm -hmm. Front court setter. Of course, for Team Gold as Childress is up front. Beautiful set. Emma Willis getting the start this weekend for Team Hints has just been very steady for them. Five kills last night, but only one error. So she hits 400, goes for high efficiency. You know, obviously they're able to play defense around her because their defense was amazing. Betty De La Cruz. Unloading, it's a victory when you get a pass off of her. This is a chance for Hens. That soft shot could prove to be devastating. Brooke Nunaviller making the move. Here's how you earn points 
in Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. A service ace, we've seen a couple of them, plus 12, a block plus 12 as well. You can also lose points for errors. So for example, Betty De La Cruz serving. You avoided the passing error. Another big dig and... Oh. Brooke Nunneviller has every shot in the book, every shot. And that is the sort of thing I think you see change in a young player's game when they play alongside someone like De La Cruz. She's consistently seeing De La Cruz use that deep corner shot, just use the court to her advantage. Well, and Brooke Nunaviller also was the number one beach team at yes. Oregon, so she's got a lot of beach in her shots team, hence taking advantage of all their weapons. A five-point lead midway through set one. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact and fueled by Gatorade. our Air National Guard into the action as Team Hens leads Team Edmund by five. Key, where are you? We, we can't even see Key Michael. I'm hiding, I'm hiding around the corner, but I have something for you. All right, we always talk about how important serving is in volleyball, and I wanna give you the why. Not just the why, but the how. Here is the, imagine you've got three defenders or three receivers here. This is a volleyball court, by the way. Don't come at me for my drawing. You want to think about two things when you're serving. You're thinking about lines and you're thinking about seams. When I say lines, this is a line, this is a line, and this is a seam. Those are the important things with volleyball. Now, let's talk about Natty. She had five aces last time out, and the reason her serve is so impressive for three reasons. One, her contact is super solid. She always contacts it. It floats really high and deep. Second thing is she served from zone one. We talked about that in the last broadcast. This is zone one. Two zone one, so she goes all the way across the court. And it looks like she's gonna go line. She doesn't, she throws off her opponent. And the third thing is she's gonna drop the ball either short or long. So she varies her serve. So those are the three reasons why Nasi is absolutely crushing it in the serve. Any questions? Any questions? For Key, it's a great explanation. 
Yeah, I just, um, I, I feel like also, do you think that that zone one would create some issues with the setter? You know, having to receive the serve over her shoulder from zone one. Do you think that's another reason why she so consistently goes cross like that? Yeah, especially because if the setter's coming from behind, she has to run in front of that ball. Or if the setter's in front, that's a difficult angle for the ball to come to. So if the setter's here, it's just difficult for that ball to come off the platform. If the setter's running from back here, she has to go all the way around it. But specifically, I mean, Nazi just puts it really short. And as soon as you think you know where it's going, she then puts it really deep. So this mm. player right here kind of just struggles to know if they should move forward, if they should move backwards. And uh, that's how she gets people way off the mark. And I think he, as a middle hitter, that kind of can make it a little bit difficult for a middle as well when your setter is looking behind her to receive that ball. They're taking away attacks from you. Yeah, exactly. So if the middle is here, usually coming from either here or over here. But if that ball comes off, then there can be like a collision right here. So the setter is coming in forward and the middle is trying to come off the net and around. And you got to go around the setter if that ball comes this way. It can be this kind of conflict. See where I'm scribbling right here? That's where that's the conflict zone right there that Natty's trying to cause on the other side. <laughs> is it where all that scribble is? Exactly. All right, Professor Michael, very nice. Don't get it on your fancy pants. You'll get that, you'll never come out that dry erase. It's a seriously congested traffic pattern, yes. is what she's drawing right there. Exactly. Molly McCage, meanwhile, serving at Hens. None of Iller can do it. She we just saw a beach shot from her again over the top and now power. Coyazo. It's a really nice swing out of the back row as Alicia Childress is having to chase a ball off the court. You're thinking just out of system there, you know, maybe mm -hmm. keep the ball in play. Not Coyazo. She goes up and takes a big rip. McCage goes after none of Iller. It works. It's a tougher pass. Leah Edmond. Longest rally we've had so far. Shasi. Little pitch shot. She was trying to go to the back line and said ended up colliding with her setter. Yeah, as you mentioned, the back line has been lethal for Team Hens. Edmund trying to find it as well. Ace serve, Team Hentz. Let's find our star in the stands, who also happens to be an MVP from match number one, Kayla Caffey. Kayla, who are you with? Um, right now I'm with the Starlings. Woo! And so what are they saying to you there as they're watching this great volleyball? They're loving it. They're eating it up. Um, they're asking for my TikTok handle. Uh, I've got some new followers, and people have to follow back when I get home. But yeah, they're all really eager and telling me their position. So it's really cool sitting here. Kayla, how young were you when you started playing volleyball? When I started playing, I was 12. Early on. And Sterling's a safe place for disadvantaged girls to find empowerment and direction, trying to get more people involved with volleyball. How old are the athletes around you? How old are you guys? I'm 11. I'm 12. I'm 10. I'm 10. I'm 12. I'm 10. Awesome. So yeah, we got like a nice little range here. We're so happy they're here. We're going to check back in with you in a bit. OK, sounds good. <laughs> Team Hans, big lead. Can't pursue that. Into the stands, and an important one for Team Edmund. You talked about it the other day. There was a slow start for Team Edmund. A nice front line here. You were a setter. Missy, who are you going to if you're running the offense? Well, you know, I really liked the production that we've seen early in this season from Hennessy's Cagliasso out of the right side. I think she is a player who can kind of be an X factor because we all know a lot of balls to the left side, but I think if they can create some balance here with some balls to the right side as well, I really like her production. And a service error prevents any kind of offense coming from there. None of Villa behind. This is a massive front line for Team Hens, mm -hmm. except for their setter. Look at that matchup for Natalia Valentin Anderson. No choice. That's a brilliant play. Yeah, that's that's a huge block, as you just mentioned moments ago. And yet Coyasso is able to go off those hands. That's it's really just an elite swing. A great block. 
an even better attack. And as you mentioned, had the pass been there, the easy matchup in that particular rotation is Luke's over the smaller setter. But with the pass not being there, that by necessity, she comes up with a huge kill. Betty De La Cruz attacks hands better than anybody I have seen. She really does. I mean, and the fact that she was just used moments ago, she loves to come right back and one-up her opponent. So she's going to she's gonna choose her shot based on moments ago her hands were used or she's going to come right back at you. Yeah, and she'll, attacking hands is just that, using any misplacement of your hand. If it's not facing the right way, Another example, right? Attacking Absolutely. hands. Going for those hands. And De La Cruz does it with multiple speeds. We've seen her hit high, hard, flat. We've seen her use off speed, but all to with the same result. That it's off of the blocker's hands at a point, out of bounds, and a point to De La Cruz. Obviously, I like Cojasso here on the right side. However, I think if we can see a good pass from Team Edmund, as you pointed out, the easy matchup is actually on the other side of the court. The pass just hasn't been there. And why isn't the pass there? You know, uh, <laughs> this Hens team is really strong from the service line. I think right now what they're doing well is we've talked about seams, as Key pointed out to us, and then sometimes movement on the ball is a key. So I feel like they've done a great job with movement on their ball. They're not serving it right on the platform of the passer, but lots of movement. Take another look at this one. In or out on that drop. You've got a call on that one? Not from that angle. I, I also thought, it's still hard to see from that one, but I, I also think it's 23-16, and Team Edmund has two captain's challenges per set. Yes. And so there, that angle is the one that will show you, the one from the end line. Yeah. We'll show you that. It was out, barely. Yeah. yeah, I believe so. That one doesn't tell you much, but I do think the inline one will show just barely out. Key, what do you think? You got the better eyes. I think it was in. I know, I, I promise you, I thought it was in before they gave the point. All right, for anybody that wasn't with <laughs> us for the first thing, here's the way that Key does this. <laughs> she waits for the official to make, you're a cheater, Key. She waits to see the official's hands and then makes the call, so she looks brilliant while the rest of us, I know you, I, I'm on to you now, Key. That's not true. I told our producer, I think it's in. <laughs> Back me up, Mike. Rosenthal. No. <laughs> he, he said you did not. Rude. <laughs> Off the block. Edmund not able to get it done. It's set point, Team Hence. And Team Hence running away with this one, but unfortunately, Betty De La Cruz really slow to get up right here. And obviously that is of great concern for her teammates. Just slow moving. Let's take a look again. Oh, mm -hmm. that's the worst injury in volleyball. If you're looking at their feet. Yeah. Underneath the net, both players, she lands on top, rolled ankle. It's the classic yeah. volleyball injury. Two players just going hard at the net. It happens so often. Katie Lukes, and here's the matchup we were talking about. Power coming from Zaskia Hippa to put away first set, 25-16. It's a pretty quick first set, a very big statement made here early by Team Hens, and everyone getting in on the action as Hippa finishes it off from the back row, by the way. Just a powerful performance in set one, setting the tone by Team Hens. Set two action, coming up next.
Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Having representation and diversity in volleyball might not seem like a huge deal to a lot of people, but when you're different, when you're one of a few, uh, it matters a lot. If you're born to do something, it doesn't matter where you come from, the color of your skin, it doesn't matter if you speak English or not, like, or Spanish or, you know, any language, it doesn't matter. I think it comes from within. I represent all Latinas that wants to play, you can do that. Just watch me, and in the future, you're gonna you're gonna do it. It is the literal visual representation that you can do something. Being able to see it means that you can do it, and it gives you that extra push for you to feel like you can get something more. You can be more. You can do more, which we all can. No better way to make it work. Our athletes have partnered with Starlings this week in an effort to widen the pool of participation within the sport of volleyball, exactly what Deja was talking about, and a specific emphasis on increasing Indigenous and Latinx representation. They're all sitting in the stands there getting a, a little tutoring lesson from a Kayla Caffey. She has had a great first match today. Kayla Caffey with Danielle Hart out, came in, was inserted into the lineup, and she ended up having such an amazing performance that she was MVP number three. Uh, just good for her. You know, we always be ready when your name is called, step up and see if you can make an impact. And Kayla Caffey, you know, she has played at three different colleges. And she said, hey, I think that benefits me. I can adapt quickly, right? And I think that's paying off for her. Notice all three MVPs there from Team Purple. They were dominant. And Claire Trasse now has two MVP one votes already uh, this weekend. So pretty incredible. Kayla, let me ask you, Danielle Hart out, and so you knew that they were gonna come to you and rely on you today. Is it true what Missy said, that your three colleges kind of have allowed you to be able to adapt to whatever situation? Yeah, for sure. I think like moving around and just having like different coaches, different setters, just playing with different teammates, that definitely has helped with my adaptability in the game, so yeah. Kayla, but you are still new to this format of AU just a couple weeks in. So how do you like this idea of shuffling the cards? The fact that your team changes every weekend. What do you think is like maybe the biggest positive and negative uh, for you? Not nearly a negative, but a challenge, I guess yeah, would be the right word. For sure. I absolutely love it. I think it's so fun getting to play with all these amazing athletes. There's so many great players here, and I feel like I'm learning so much and taking a little bit from each team that I'm on. 
I guess like a problem or like a challenge that it could present is just like you it's hard to build team chemistry sometimes you can't have those same people on your team each week to just build that chemistry and go on a run you know and a lot of times for a middle hitter it's really difficult to con to get the the relationship with your setter yes. quickly and so how has that been with Hilly Sydney's awesome she's just like a master setter she's so good and she just felt me so well from jump like it was not a problem connecting. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kayla. We're going to check back in with you again later. Oh, you guys are having fun with the starlings over there. We'll visit with you again later. OK. Second set underway. Team Hentz, first point. They're going at Edmund. Interesting. They want to wear out Edmund. Bang! She's insulted. And that is the question. When you go at Edmund in serve receive, there's times where yes, it can overload her. Maybe she could struggle in serve receive. And there's times where I've seen it have the opposite effect where she finds a rhythm. Some players actually like to pass and hit. I think Leah Edmund, if she can find that rhythm, she's one of them that gets better. So I'll be curious to see now if Team Hens goes away from her. To the middle, De La Cruz coming up. Beautiful by Molly McCage. Let's check in with Cruz, because I know you know Betty De La Cruz well. She's third right now on the leaderboard. Yeah, I just asked her if she was OK after falling on her ankle there. And she said, yeah, he, I'm totally fine. Thanks for checking on me. I think she's one of the strongest players I possibly know. Having said that, maybe it is affecting her just a little bit, having gotten ace. But I was going to say also that I chatted to Molly on the other side. It's going to be bad news if Betty is in good form, because Molly said, the problem they're having is they're not staying deep on defense. They're not, they're allowing Betty to hit those corners. She's got that placement deep. And she said, I said to her, hey, uh, are you blaming it all on the defense then? Is that what's going wrong? She said, yeah, the block's doing fine, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was perfect punctuation there with a big block <laughs> by Molly McCage and Collazo. And a couple quick points here for Team Edmund, and it has a lot to do with the service line. Yeah. All of a sudden, Shelly Fanning back, has gone back there. In fact, Team Hens has now made an adjustment in their passing line, and guess what? It won't matter. Shelly Fanning has now aced Betty De La Cruz, has aced Brooke Nunaviller, and caused a big problem for Hens, which doesn't happen very often. Hens had a one option pass just moments ago. So well done, Shelly Fanning. It's a 5 0 run yes. for Team Edmund. Dime pass from Nunaviller, lets him work the middle. Great turn, beautifully done by Emma Willis. Interesting that Fanning was really working on all three passers, not going at just one, yeah. but moving it around. You know, and a lot of times, right, you will go at the same passer uh -huh. again and again, but you have three of the best passers in the world back there, yeah. and so, like, lightning's not gonna strike twice, maybe? Right, I think, I think that might have been good, uh, good strategy. Betty De La Cruz sends it a little long. If you're loving what you see, be sure to follow Athletes Unlimited on all of your favorite social media platforms. That's where you'll find the game highlights, some really fierce fit checks, the hot seat, behind the scenes action, and so much more. So follow today at AU Pro Sports. Betty brings that in. Hence looks, team Hence looks a little bit rattled. Yeah. Nunaviller finds the corner. It's the passing. And yes. boy, did I, I never thought I would say that about this team, right? Yep. And so really, all I think lots of credit to Team Edmund right now, who's come out here in set two with a really different mindset. I think, hey, we're going to be the aggressor yes. here in set two. We can't wait. Right. We go out and we be the aggressor from, from point one. That's a great point. And Alicia Childress, the setter, is up front. But he did the cruise, picks that up. Free ball. It should be good. Betty puts it right on the setter. I don't love tips on a free ball. And then into the net, never over, point team hence. Yeah, surprised by the tip on the free ball myself. I have to say, it looked like they were going to have an easy run at it there. Why does it surprise you? Yeah, just with, with this level of offense, I think typically any time a player you know, has that free ball opportunity, you know the pass is going to be good. You're expecting the set to be good. Maybe Jenna Rosenthal was so anticipating it, maybe she's a little ahead of it, perhaps. Maybe. Didn't I just a moment ago tell everybody that Alicia Childress is front row and yeah. she will dump the ball? Because <laughs> as a setter, you can really feel it. Yes. And, and by the way, she'll do it again if she needs to, but Molly McCage is up front. Yeah. Look for her coming around the back, don't you think? 
I would definitely think so. Okay, so now I know that he told us that Betty De La Cruz has not been bothered by the ankle, but it is incredibly rare to see Betty have this kind of issues on serve receive. It is, so you do have to wonder. You also, you know, three elite passers right now, and is there an element of like not wanting to take the other's ball? You know, you, you think the other has it? I don't know. I, I don't see that happening with these three. Um, but it is interesting when you're passing next to, to, next to such an elite passer that you might assume they want that ball. Right. So as we've talked about, the shuffling of the decks each week just creates a need for extreme communication. It's funny because we're telepathic because I thought the same thing. With anybody else, Morgan Hentz would stand up, spe step over and take that ball. That's what I'm thinking too, with, yeah. With Queen De La Cruz, maybe You not. don't, yes. And maybe even, you know, passing next to Brooke Neneville. She might think, well, Brooke is totally capable of passing that. You yeah. back off a little. We saw the opposite, though, on Friday with Netterville and Hans crashing into each mm -hmm. other, which is fun in a way because yeah. they're both going for it. Molly McCage serving. Contact wasn't the best, but went to De La Cruz. Bang! Beautiful ball from Team Gold. Let's go over to a cheer chat with former Oregon Duck, Lindsay Vandeweide. Lindsay, are you having a good time? Of course, always a good time at AU. Hey, were you listening to us when we were saying it's a little unusual to see your team have some passing issues there for a few minutes? Uh, to what do you attribute that to? Um, I mean, it's gonna happen eventually. We've been really crisp so far on our serve receive. So eventually there's gonna be little streaks where there's problems. Uh, the great part about it is having Morgan Hentz who can clean that up and take a lot of the court. Can you give us a little inside look, Lindsay, as to what your discussions were? You really dominated set one, and obviously Edmund has come out here as you know the aggressor in set two. Can you talk a little bit about what your discussion was between sets? Yeah, we talked a lot about our block, honestly. We talked about getting a lot of good positive touches. We don't need to get stuffs, and she's obviously going to get her kills, but getting good positive touches and turning those into good plays is big. Lizzie, let me ask you this really quickly. You played with Brooke Nunneviller against Morgan Hentz That's who's walking in by. college. What's it like to be all together now on a team? Very fun. Um, I love playing next to Brooke. I only got one year with her, sadly. Um, hate playing against Morgan, but love playing with her, so it's good to have her on my team this week. <laughs> I love that. Thank you for spending time with us. Of course. Set two, time out. Team Edmund, a hot start. They're plus six in this set. So y'all want the tea? Well, <laughs> what kind do you want? You want super team tea steeped in drama from Sin City to Brooklyn? Or do you want something a little spicy? Because I got tea on all the trash talk in and around the W. <laughs> I saw y'all comments. We got sweet tea, bank shot tea, off season tea, and don't forget the fits. But the tea party isn't over. I've got a lot more to spill. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. My family connections to the military are both of my grandfathers, both served, and it has impacted me because I just have so much respect for the sacrifices that not only they went through, but anyone who is a part of the military, and just so much respect and reverence for what they do and the sacrifices that they make. I'm here with Lauren, Lori Groats, mom of Marin. 
So the military means a lot to you and your family. Oh, we have a long history of uh, the military. My dad was in the Army, but all of my mom's uh, family has been in the Marine Corps, uh, going all the way back to my great-great-grandfather. I hope enough the greats in there. He was the first commanding general at Quantico. Very cool. My, my grandfather is a colonel, and my uncle's a colonel. So for you, what does it mean for your daughter to be here at this professional level? She has been working for this since she was eight years old. Her first volleyball experience was when she was eight, and she chose number eight for that reason. And tonight, she's number 88. <laughs> Very cool. Well, she said her former coach, Keegan Cook, only recruits genuine people. She's obviously a genuine person. So are a lot of the other players here. I know her sister, Lydia, now plays for him at Minnesota. But do you think that he would be proud? Oh, Keegan is very proud of both of my girls, and I couldn't be prouder of Keegan and my girls. <laughs> Keegan. Well, she just graduated from Washington in 2023. She's now also signed for Grand Rapids Rise. Did she always want to play pro? Yes, she's been talking about this since the beginning. She's always said from the beginning she wanted to be in the Olympics, and this is the best road to get there. Oh, good luck with her. Um, also, how does she feel about the draft, being a new player? I feel like that's one of those, the most stressful parts about this league. Yeah, that's a brand new thing, and that is very hard. Um, it's, it's very scary, and she's dependent on her teammates, and she has to really build relationships, and I think she's doing that, but she's brand new. Some of these girls have been doing it for a long time. This is her first year, and it's, it's intimidating. Can you tell me one cool thing about her off-court that we might not know? Um, she's... I just want to say she's the best big sister, and not just to her sister, but to other people. She is always looking out for everyone. She uh, you know, cares about people, and she asks about people, and she goes and out of her way to take care of people. So. Thank you so much. Well, we're so glad she's here, and thank you so much for chatting with us. Thank you so much. Thanks. I tell you what, Keegan Cook, when he went to Minnesota this year, Lydia Grote was somebody he knew he needed immediately. Lydia Grote had been a cow, was doing it all there, but not necessarily surrounded. And she has blossomed at Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, in this set, Missy, 12-7 star for Team Edmund. What do you make of it? tell you what, they kind of have come out with this attitude of like, we're not going to feel the pressure, we're going to apply the pressure. And it started at the service line, which has allowed them to transition that into blocks at the net, because they have actually managed to get what we thought would probably be the most elite passing team we had seen a little shaky in terms of serve receive. I just can't say enough good things about the pressure they've created from the service line. Gabby Blossom in on the action right now as well, as they've subbed her in the backcourt. Yeah, very interesting to have Blossom in However, notice who's in left front right now, Kitty Luke. So these two have played a whole lot together, so this makes sense to me, you yeah. know? And these two were in the national semifinals mm -hmm. last year mm -hmm. of collegiate volleyball. They're both very young players. Now Childress comes back in. You can get your ticket and join us here in Mesa, Arizona at auprosports.com slash tickets. Fanning pounds it down. Really nice use of the middle there, and that's only possible with the great pass that we see from Team Edmund. So Team Edmund, not only are they creating pressure and creating some shaky passing from Team Hens, but right now they're doing a good job of nailing their passes. Valentina Anderson, beautiful. Back. Morgan Hentz gets part of it. Valentina Anderson up. Beautiful dig, Augusto underneath it. And Edmund crushing down the line. Small block down the line. Valentina Anderson in right front right now. And this is a pretty easy look for Leah Edmund as she just smashes it. But you have to credit the set there of Alicia Childress, giving her that opportunity down the line with a really nice push to the outside. Opens the door a little bit for Team Hens and to one of their better servers. Yes, I was just going to say, I guess who's going back to the service line. Let's see if she goes to her go-to serve. You see she's in what we would consider zone one, kind of back there in the right back corner. And typically she serves cross. Okay, so she switches it up a little. Oh, Leah Edmond is motivated. Terrific chase. Now you got to play it off the ceiling, which none of Miller does. This is what we call a free ball. All your options. They go quicker. Wow. And Brooke Nanabiller 
gets her helmet on and goes right in there. Third consecutive free ball. You never see this in volleyball. And they're blocked as a team, hence defies the odds. You only defy those odds when you have two Libros in the backcourt. That's basically what Hintz has right now. None of Villar steps in and steals a kill from Edmund. I mean, they've got none of Villar middle back. Hintz in left back. A just unbelievable play out of the backcourt. It's the block, though, here that finishes it off on this final swing from Edmund. So an all-out defensive effort. And they said coming into the weekend, they wanted their defense to define them. The reason you never see that in volleyball is because usually on a free ball, the team that receives it converts on the first try. Mm -hmm. That's what made that so special. Net violation against Team Edmund. And look at Team Hentz under the service of Valentin Anderson yeah. chipping away. And honestly, the swings from Edmund on those free balls, they those were worthy of kills. It's just that the defenders for Team Hentz are just so good. Katie Luke's the perfect pass. That's set up. You're looking at the hit, but it's Katie Luke's. Katie Luke's pass. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the service pressure, but in serve receive, I think right now Team Edmund, it's it's you wouldn't have expected it, but they have the advantage. So when it comes to that serve pass game that we talk so much about, Team Edmund has taken the advantage in the serve pass game here in set two, and that's why they're leading. Another errant pass. As you look at the score, which is now 17-11, note the match score below. Because at the end of this, there's an aggregate score of the three sets. It's very close. Team Hentz 36, Team Edmund 33. You know, I think Betty De La Cruz passes the high balls that eat her up quite well. And I feel like Team Edmund is forcing her to have to move forward. Low balls in front of her right now. We mentioned earlier, maybe a slight roll to the ankle. Looks like they're trying to squeeze her a little and asking Brooke to cover a little more space. That was more of a two-man pass. Betty just kind of hanging out there on the left side. Squeeze, meaning push her over yeah. to the side and say, you don't need to pass unless it's right at you. Because she's a front row player pri prior to this. She's just now rotated back, but she was in a rotation where she was hitting, and you've got two good enough passers, and none of them are in hints. They can cover the whole floor. Two national team yeah. passers. I think they're good enough. That's a heck of a pass. And it sets that up so every time we see Tia Medman, it starts with that first touch. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised that Betty goes at Namaris there that time in serve receive because there's one player who is not going to back down from De La Cruz. I would say it's Augusto there. She is, has a lot of experience herself. What a beautiful pass. They are making mm -hmm. Betty De La Cruz pass everything possible. Leah Edmund is going to stand and deliver this. Morgan Hans, a fantastic setting Libro. Childress goes the wow. long way to Molly McCage. Same set by the opposing team. Everyone knows it's going outside to Brooke, and that's why they're all over there. Same thing with Edmund, driving a truck through the block. Really a nice spin set by Childress there because even though that's out of system, what we saw moments before from Team Hens out of system, a high set to the outside, Childress spins on it and creates some tempo that allows Edmund to blast through there. You see the leaderboard there, the top four at the end of this week will be the captains for next week. We're gonna step away right now, but it's only a two point lead in the aggregate score. Team Edmund catching up on Hens. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the fall in hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel.
It's really hard to put into words what going back to Penn State, going back to Happy Valley um, as a pro, as a professional, after a lot of years, <laughs> uh, three kids. It was like being embraced by a warm hug, like just people that in the community that supported volleyball then are still there and they're still supporting it and they're still so passionate. The energy still feels the same and I just really give credit to, you know, whether it's the Booster Club or just fans in general, like they're just so supportive and they made my time there really, really special. Childress setting her team to a lead in set number two. And she said three kids. Key, are you babysitting over there? Yeah, I just, I, I saw the iPads and I just had to get involved. Uh, so this is Josh, this is Alicia's husband. And who do we have here? I'm Maya. Mina. Amara. <laughs> what are you guys enjoying about the match? I like mommy. I think a lot of people like mommy. She is awesome setter, but it's so cool that she's back on the court after taking a little bit of a break. She's been back with Athletes Unlimited two seasons now. But what's cool is that she gets to play for your own foundation. What, can you tell us a little bit what it's about? Josh Childress Foundation supports student athletes. So we provide uh, resources, scholarships uh, for high school and collegiate student athletes. So uh, very near and dear to all of our hearts here in this gym. It is very cool. And how cool is it seeing her back on court right now? She's looking over. She knows that we're in the interview right now. How cool is it seeing her back on court? She's a bronze medalist from the 2016 Olympics. It's amazing seeing her back on court. I think she's worked her butt off to get back on court having, you know, after having three kids. Uh, and she's loving every minute of it. So I'm happy for her and proud of her. And do you guys want to be volleyball players one day? Uh, what? <laughs> she's, she's watching the iPad. There's a lot going on here. I what? wanted to ask, what's on the iPad, Key? What are you guys watching on the iPad? I like watching Think About Lego. You guys talking to the mic? I like Lego show. Yeah, Lego show. She's cool. watching a Lego show. That's yeah. why I came over here mainly, because I was watching that as well. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. That's so fun. And with seven kids between us, Missy, between the two of us, for Childress, that takes real focus. Oh, to yes. To not look over. Yes, I can't imagine. And be like, did you feed the kids? Right. What are they doing? Get them off. You know, whatever it is. <laughs> Sit down over there. Yes. But it's really something special, right? To be oh. able to show your children. And you know that her family is here. Yes. I mean, it's just incredible. And then for Marin Groat's mom, I was yes. thinking about, you know, we talk, Key talked to her earlier and you know, it's a dream for all these girls to play professionally, but to be able to do it here where your family can come and be a part of that, oh, it yeah. is just so special. Brooke Nunnaviller from this area, mm -hmm. Willow Johnson from this area. They both have massive families here. Meanwhile, Team Edmund has just taken off. They're winning this set by a lot and only down one overall. The reason that matters is whoever has the most points combined at the end of three sets gets an extra 60 points per player. None of Villar. None of Villar answers with a huge rip out of left front. They are looking to turn this around. And for Alicia Childress's kids, we want to let them know, Team Hilly versus Team Ants tomorrow at 7 p.m. on ESPN+. Plus. You can get that on your iPad. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if they want to put that on their iPad and watch, and all of you, too, it'll be great. <laughs> Outside, none of Iller. She's so crafty, and I think a lot of it comes from her beach game. And, you know, Childress was just on the run there to make second contact moments ago. She's barely getting back into defensive position. Well, Brooke is very aware of that. Childress hustling to get back over there. Not really time to get set and establish a great block. So you see none of her just go right off those hands. Just a really smart shot. A serve. Zaskia Hippa. Yeah, and Hintz, Hintz needs to answer here from the service line because it has certainly been the Team Edmund show from the service line so far here in the second set. Now it's a three-point run now by Team Hintz. Leah Edmund handles it beautifully. Katie Lukes thinking she's got the smaller blocker and doing it and Rosenthal beside. Nope. Valentin Anderson, I'm sure, is so used to players assuming, well, this will, this will be an easy kill. Smaller blocker in front. But Valentin Anderson 
She is mighty. She may be little, but she's mighty. And look at the strong press, taking away that low hard ball. Zaskia putting it right on Valentine Anderson. Neneviller again, off hands again. It's a huge run by Team Hens. De La Cruz in the back row. It's Nunnerviller in the front row who is really lighting a fire under Team Hens. Again, knowing the setter is in the front row and taking advantage of this matchup that she has right now. Five consecutive points by Team Hens. And we've got a lot of aces and a lot of serves happening in this 5-0 run. And a lot of people have talked about the future of Brooke Nunnaviller's game maybe being as a libero rather than just an outside, and yet she's so capable on the outside. And we see Betty De La Cruz with an ace here as we take a look at some of the great serving that's been on display in this match. Brooke Nunnaviller, it was Leah Edmond prior to that. So here in set two, Leah Edmond's team looks to have taken the advantage, but early in this match, lots of great serving from Team Hintz as well. So really the second set has just sort of evened it out. Fanning went on a nice little run there in set two that created some pressure and really allowed Team Edmund to take, take the lead. And for every ace during this year's Athlete Unlimited Volleyball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. In this match so far, 70 trees have been committed. Wow. It's nice changing the world match. in this match. It's been beautiful. Let's talk about Betty De La Cruz. We saw her twist her ankle. She's done some amazing uh, things in this match and had some moments of struggle. Yeah, I think, you know, the interesting thing about Betty is that she's just so iconic that it surprises us, right? If she makes a single error. And yet when you take a look at the highlights, boy, are there plenty to go around because she's such a complete player. It's not just the offense. It's the range. It's the movement of the ball. It's what she does at the service line. She uses the entire court. And I really think that the younger attackers around her, you'll often see on, on her team, the younger attackers around her tend to get better just over the course of the weekend, playing yeah. next to such an elite player. Yeah, she takes a lot of pressure off, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Her Instagram handle, the Big Beth. Yes. 499 kills in Athletes Unlimited. Her next kill is gonna be her 500th career kill for AU. That was tough. Childress made the most of it. Nunnerville are going to come back again. Makes the middle. Molly McCage handled the first ball, and Molly says, really? Watch. That, that's what we're expecting from free balls. I mean, that's what we're so used to seeing, that perfect first contact. The setter has options, and of course, a great option is always Molly McCage on the slide. Brooke Nunnaviller, dime pass, and then going to hit. Brooke Nunnaviller has broken out in this match. Tell you what, set two right now, if Team Hints could come back and get the second set, it would be all about the play of Brooke Nunnaviller. As a setter, do you set Brooke Hints in the back court, or do you go to, oh. because Hints is hot, but you got Betty De La Cruz. Yeah, um, uh, I don't know. I still feel like I go front row if, if everything's in system. Morgan Hens underneath for the cover. Zaskia Hippa just sends it way wide. Just a loss of court awareness for a moment. Yeah. Now that's a situation where I thought maybe we would see Nunaviller out of the back row. After yeah. the block coverage over there in left front, that one I was expecting to brook Nunaviller. Yeah, Nunaviller, seven kills, seven digs. They go at her. They want to try to break down Nunaviller. But they got Betty De La Cruz up front. That back third of the court is so important. Yes. Yes, if you can, all, the high contact of Betty De La Cruz consistently, time and time again, you see the wrist snap at the top of her swing. She is able to always find the deep corner and with that one, make it 500. Yeah, now, 500 in, in her AU career. Pretty incredible. That is just special, the way she does it. Meanwhile, Team Hens with Into, mm -hmm. they're making a substitution, bringing in Lindsay Stalzer to serve. 
Rosenthal is going to get a break in the backcourt. Mm -hmm. Stalls will play defense. It's a tough spot to come into. Serve is good. Pass is better. That's a tough one. Oh, and Valentine Anderson touched the net. And so it's set point, Team Edmund. You know, with that little substitution there, they're able to do that. And they Stalzer can still play in middle back where she's comfortable. And they can slide Brooke Nunneville over to left back because she has spent time as a Libro. You don't lose anything defensively with that substitution. It's beautiful. Right. Katie Luke serving for the set. This is for the set. Captain Leah Edmond and Morgan Hens lays out. Yeah, you're going back to Captain Nunneviller again, changes the plan. Betty De La Cruz. I thought Valentine Anderson actually set De La Cruz slightly lower a couple balls here, but this last ball outside to her, she hangs it up a little bit higher. That tends to be Betty's sweet spot. She likes to go up high. We know how good she is with her high contact point. And she really loves hitting off of Valentine Anderson. Mm -hmm. It's set point number two, Team Edmund. <laughs> to the corner, it's Nunaviller again. Betty De La Cruz off hands. Looks like she's back in rhythm. Yes. You know, it's moments ago, Brooke Nunaviller out there in left front sort of sparked a little comeback. And boy, then she rotates to the back row, but you don't obviously, you don't lose the offense because here comes De La Cruz. And now she continues right where Brooke Nunaviller left off. This one to tie it up. It's still set point though for Team Edmund. Oh, somebody's a little angry about that run. Team Edmund, that captain, ends it and look at her. She is fired up. 40 points on the line and Leah Edmund just grabbed them off the table. I mean, she was having no part of this comeback. Block set up a little inside. It looked like maybe that ball was gonna die, but they gave her a sliver of line. You can't give her an inch. She takes a mile, Leah Edmund. Leah Edmund is upset yes. with the way that set ended, even though they won. We'll see if she's able to fire her team up. We're split sets, match score though, hence still up by seven. This third set is gonna be off the hook. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact and fueled by Gatorade.
Mrs. Colazzo. Thank you for wearing the mic, because when she hits the ground, oh, it's yes. beautiful. Score, we're split sets. There's seven point differential between these two, and it was more, it was, sorry, Morgan Hentz's player, Brooke Nunaviller, who really broke out in that set. It was definitely her play up in left front. She rotated to the front row, and boy, it was like enough is enough. Brooke Nunaviller decided it was time to make a move, and she really got team hits back within striking distance. Just some big rips out of left front. We talk so much about her defense, but her offense is elite. And I think you made a great point, Anne-Marie, in that players playing opposite Betty takes a lot of pressure off of them. They don't necessarily feel like they have to be the big arm on the team. I think it can create a real freedom in swinging. And we know that Brooke Nunaviller has all the shots. You know, she's such a crafty player, that beach experience. And yet we saw her swing big rips as well. Just swinging with a lot of confidence, liking her matchup, and just going after it. Yeah, Brooke Nanaviller, no errors at all. Meanwhile, Team Edmund won that set. Key, I saw you over there. What'd you learn? I had to grab Leah and say, hey, what on earth were you thinking after that last hit or before that last hit? Because it was incredible. And she said to me, I was done. That was it. I thought in my head, this is over. No more points. Because if you think about it with AU, it's not about just winning the set. And she backs it up with a huge block, Leah Edmund. To my point, is a fighter. She is somebody who wants to win every single time at every single point. And specifically in AU, it's so important that those point, point runs really add to the overall total. So that was in her mind, just get this done here and now. Yeah, 60 points in the overall total. The magic number is 19. Mm. If Morgan Hentz's team, Team Hentz, gets 19 points, they win the overall, Missy, okay. and the 60 extra points. Yeah, you said, Amory, after that, for that set, Team uh, Edmund wins, and yet you said Leah Edmund is mad. And that is what Key was alluding to, the fact that we're gonna take another look here as we go back into this one. The final kill of the set. Her team wins, and you wouldn't know that from the look on her face. And that is coming because of the fact, as Key pointed out, they had actually looked like they were gonna close out that second set with a very close overall score. And they allowed that run by Team Hintz, which now coming into this one, they were minus seven in the aggregate. And against a team like Hintz, that's a pretty big number to overcome. As you look at the leaderboard on the left, which is dynamic, ever-changing, Betty De La Cruz at number five. She's been a captain mm -hmm. coming into this uh, week, eight of ten weeks of Athletes Unlimited history. Leah Edmond, still done. This will be an interesting match. The points are going to be close. I think, you know, the MVP voting is going to be very interesting. Yeah. There's going to be some big impacts on the leaderboard based on this set right here. I think that's really important. We're going to get all those answers out of this set. Yes. Nunaville are waiting for the next ball. That's a recycle for people mm -hmm. who have been following along so that she could do that. Can you explain to people who want to know why that was a recycle? Yeah, so doesn't like the look she has there and knows that she has that ability to go for a softer push into the block that her team will purposefully play back up. They're just going to recycle that ball and get a better look. And it's Brooke who gets it again. She backs out, gets ready, comes back in, and the second time she's got the opportunity with a big approach to use the block. Service error. I want to check in with our star in the stands again. Kayla Cafe, are you watching this? I am. What are you making of this kind of back and forth right now? It feels tense in here. Yeah, it does feel tense. This is a great game. I mean, two really good teams going up against each other. We literally don't know who's going to win. Like, it's a great game. Would you guys say it's a great game? Yeah! Are you having fun? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> These are the starlings that she's uh, talking to. For you, Kayla, just from your uh, athlete mindset, what is each team doing well? What's Team Hentz doing well? We'll start there. Um, I think that, honestly, I don't know. Me and the, the Starlings are having too much fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll appreciate the we made a honest TikTok. answer. <laughs> oh, I get it. We're, and there, we're chatting, we're chatting. But what do, you, what do you guys think that the teams are doing well? Have you seen anything? Yeah. Um, what do you think they're doing well? Like everything. Everything. They're doing serve receive really Number, good. Serve receive really good. And Number 32 is my favorite. Okay. Number 32 <laughs> is her favorite. Let's see. Is 32. That's me. Yay. That's funny. She said Kayla. Oh, they didn't hear you. Shout out to number 28. Her name's Kayla. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'm glad you're having a good time. We'll look for the TikTok. 
<laughs> you said what? I'm glad you're having a good time, and we'll look for the TikTok. Oh, yeah, look for the TikTok. <laughs> All right, thank you, and thanks to the Starlings. Thank you, guys. Rosenthal was getting blocked. I love that Zaskia Hippa was right underneath. Yeah. Tell you what, a player that's really jumped out at me in terms of stock rising is Shelly Fanning. Is having a really nice match for Team Edmund. What is she doing well that you like? You know, I just feel like um, I hadn't seen much of her in the previous weekend. And it's, it's the block deflection. It's the plays like that. You know, maybe they don't end the rally, but boy, she seems like someone who's really easy to play next to. She creates plays around her. I like that a lot. I loved that play, hence going to Nunaviller. Mm -hmm. Again, it's bro to bro. She, you know, Morgan Hens is one of the most elite setter, yeah. setting Libros in the world. Yes. Here's Nunaviller from behind the service line. Fanning, mm -hmm. to your point. Betty De La Cruz, again, down the line. So many shots. That, that ball, if you're a defender standing on the line, some, you feel like that ball has to be out of bounds. Right. You know, it's just you think there's All of no them. way. Yeah. And it's just like somehow over the shoulder or around the hip of Cayasso, and she finds the court. It's just unbelievable. Trouble. Childress brings it back. I love that Katie Lukes takes big swings. Mm -hmm. She takes big swings on balls. And on that out of system ball, do you see how Childress literally, with the forearm pass to the outside, she she sends it. It's a right. fast ball it's a tempo off the still. arms yeah. of Childress. That's, that just blows my mind. That's what Olympic medalists do. Yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. right? I, I guess. suppose. I suppose. Perfect pass allows this to go with tempo out to Betty De La Cruz, even though she usually likes to hire. There's so many stars on the floor. There really are. It's great to see Katie Luke this weekend just swinging with so much confidence. Team Edmund just down by four in the overall score, the aggregate score. They don't just need to win this set, they need to win it by six. Yeah. In order to get that extra bonus. Right now, each team has gotten 40 points for their set wins, each player on each team collects those points. Ooh, I like the fact that Hens calls Betty off there. Me too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really nice call by Hens. We talked earlier about the fact that they're passing next to such elite passers. Are they hesitant to call one another off? Hens, Hens is, a, I mean, she's a future Olympian. I mean, she says, I got this. Oh, uh, she's a very soon future that Olympian. Is her, that is her role, you yeah. know, and she knows it. And I love the fact that she trusts herself enough to do that alongside the best in the world. Yeah. I wonder if she says to Betty, your boy. Uh -huh. Service ace. Every time Team Edmund starts to build a little bit of a lead, it's the service slide to your point earlier. Yeah. Both of these teams have really created chaos at different points in the match. We've seen them make runs, and it's been based off of the serve. What a beautiful delivery mm -hmm. from Childress. Free ball. Pass should be perfect. It's good. There's that chip shot down the line that De La Cruz loves. Here's another free ball. You got to go to the backcourt. OK. Brooke Nunaviller. Luke's long rally. Nunaviller helmet on. And Katie Luke's comes back. Amazing. How hard is it to kill a ball against Team Hens? Very. I mean, they just step right into the middle of the court. Look how shallow Nunaviller is. There's players who would just be scared to step up in there and take that. Not Nunaviller. I mean, on all these free balls, you feel like there's a gnat and you're taking a sledgehammer and hitting it again and again. And that spider still lives. Yes. You know? I mean, we see hints, and we've talked about Nana Viller. And then I hate not to mention Nat Natalia Valentin Anderson, as a setter, was a finalist for Defensive Player of the Year last year. Yeah, amazing. One of the best defending That's... setters in the world. So, I mean, those three on the same team, how fun is that? That's one that Betty De La Cruz expected back after that pass. Got it back in a nice tempo. Down the line. Uh oh. 
And Luke stripped a little bit and had her head down, not seeing that coming. She was on her way to the corner. The player in right back was able to make a stab at it, and then she just couldn't change directions, didn't see it. Valentine Anderson can change the game mm -hmm. with her serve. Do you make Edmund try to do double work? I Katie think, Luke? I think she goes at Katie Luke's, yeah. Oh, that's a ridiculous up by De La Cruz. And a beautiful awareness yes. of the hands of the blockers. Fanning had an opportunity on an overpass there, and she just, with two hands, gave it back. Here's the opportunity right here. Gave it back to Team Hens. As opposed to As opposed it. to taking a hit at it, or if she didn't feel comfortable taking a hit, step back and use your hands and give it to your setter. Run an offense there. Great point. Yeah, Leah's mad. Cuyazo. There's a nice finish that way. Again, it's tied up. Now Edmund, Team Edmund goes up by one. And you know, Brooke Nunaviller, the digs. I mean, this is no, just she's a amazing. highlight reel. She is totally amazing. She started at the University of Oregon her freshman year as a Libro. They had to move her to the outside in order to get some more power out there. But she has been a part of that passing rotation her entire college career. Betty just has the Midas touch. She does. I think that's what frustrates people. Yeah. And the fact that you know that she knows exactly what she's doing. She has a plan. I mean, we talked about how blockers are dream crushers. They take away the plan. It's hard to take the plan away from Betty De La Cruz. Great point. And even in watching that replay back, Betty's not, most of the time you want to be deceptive, mm -hmm. right, and have this big swing. Mm -hmm. She didn't that time. She no. went up kind of soft, and the blockers yeah. are like, oh, no, here it comes. De La Cruz now in third place. A few minutes ago, right? She was yes. in fifth. That's a nice save. Yeah. Uh oh, that's trap, a tough ball. Trap. Yes. Uh -huh. And Betty gets it up again. Yes. Brooks gonna swing. Ball is down. And Team Edmund is saying no, but the line judge said it's down. Yeah. No argument. No. And I believe that uh, Leah Edmund obviously would know if it was up or down. It was her making the play. So for her not to challenge it, we all know that ball is down. Right. And then they serve Edmund right afterwards. Out of system play, going off high hands, but Betty De La Cruz defensively has been a problem. Oh. Good finish by Team Edmund, just to tie it up. Team Hens making Leah Edmund work very, very hard for these kills. And I, I've got my eye on Edmund, because I'm watching. She can be really emotional. Mm -hmm. Betty the Cruz is so soaked that there's a lot of space to clean up over yes. there. She just kind of mops the floor. Yeah, she's wet, so there is a big area yeah. to mop up right there. I take a look at the front row right now for Team Edmund. It's Alicia Childress. Leah Edmund and Molly McCage, those were her first two draft picks. Mm -hmm. Regularly in the timeouts, it's those three chatting. They have a lot of experience together here at AU. I really like that combination of players. Yeah, and it looked like a little bit of a blocking breakdown as Childress was all the way at the line. McCage didn't look as she was expecting mm -hmm. that, and so Brooke Nunavar takes advantage of the hole. Yeah. Childress will attack mm -hmm. on this, and she's a front court setter. If you give her a pass to work with. Yeah. Good deflection, where do they go? Molly McCage, that's a ridiculous angle.
She comes around, really sharp cut. Actually, so sharp that comes inside. Oh, it didn't even look yes. like it it's live. So sharp. Well, it's now I know inside. why it's ridiculous, right? Yeah, impossible, actually. Yeah. Outside, Saskia Hippa. Katie Lukes is back there to pick it up. Edmund. Nice adjustment by Katie Lukes. They talked early in this match about the fact they weren't staying deep right. to play those high block deflections, you know, deep into the court. And so really well done by Katie Lukes that time. And those are adjustments they're making over the course of the match, improving on things. The set's gonna slow down a little bit because everybody's working so hard. There's, mm -hmm. So there's gonna be a lot of time to mop things up. That also allows a lot of time for people's heart rates to recover mm -hmm. and for conversations to happen. We've still got that front line, this time with Luke's up front, Molly McCage and Childress. Great serve. Making Betty come forward again. That one. Again, an angle, but not an impossible. Yes, there it is, there it is. Boy, it's like she just climbs the ladder, doesn't she? It is just so perfectly executed. And Alicia Childress, with the experience of playing together in the past, knows the window where she's just really comfortable. Right there, places that ball, and she goes right at the seam. Yeah, Edmund wasn't gonna hold that ball until she needed to. This time, trying to make Nunnaviller do double duty. Nunnaviller loves that, though. Ooh. Rosenthal waiting for it. And Molly McCage gets the best of her, shoving it off the block, out of bounds. Take another look at it. I love the fact that Hens used her hands and changed direction there to the right side. I got stuck watching the set. It was just so beautiful. Yeah. Rosenthal that time, here's Childress. Lokes, quick arm swing came from way down low. It's a bit of a roundhouse swing, uh -huh. it's really fast. I think for blockers, it takes some adjustment. She's a very different player to defend. Team Edmund coming alive a little bit. Molly McCage doing fabulous work up front, going off the block of Jenna Rosenthal. There's power in my voice. When I use it. To speak up for a cause. To encourage the person next to me. To help us hear the voiceless. To represent my people. To shine a light on the truth. To show others what is possible. To change the course of history. To remind you of the power in yours. There is power in your voice, but only when you use it. Who is going to win this season? Um, that is the question, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know who's gonna win this season, but I hope it's me. <laughs> if we're being honest, I want to win this season. Well, obviously I'm gonna say me. I mean, why not, right? I can win this season. <laughs> Hopefully me. You better watch out because there's players that are amazing out there. So I think it's going to be a great show.
Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited. It is tight here in the third. It's 15-13. But I wanted to talk just a little bit about Molly McCage because she actually had to go and get a real job recently. I know, sad face. But that's because there wasn't enough volleyball here in the U.S. She didn't want to go back overseas. So she was the player core co player care coordinator for softball. She loved it, but she decided recently, actually, I think I'm going to go back to playing full-time volleyball because I don't want to do anything halfway. There are so many exciting opportunities here in the USA now. The money is there. The opportunity is there. She also said, I always thought as a player I had nothing to add off-court. I, I think I have to say that that's 100% that's not true. Anyone that knows Molly McCage, she could pretty much do anything. She's a style icon now for her team. I think if we got her on the broadcast, she'd be good. But she said, I can always go back to a real job. My body works now. The best job is being an athlete. I couldn't agree more. I agree. And I was thinking the same thing. There's nothing Molly can't do. Right. She's been in, uh, She's part of the executive committee mm -hmm. here. Ball out. Rosenthal thought she got a touch. Line judges didn't call it. And Morgan Hentz is asking for a challenge review. Question is, was it touched? Rosenthal was very quick to point. She thought there was a touch. I was watching the expression of Alicia Childress. I don't oh. know. She looks slightly guilty to me. Oh, interesting. Oh. Well, maybe it's because her right hand. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because her pinky and ring finger on her right hand. Oh, well, I don't know. It may have been just no reaction from Childress because she may just be tired at this point in the match, as you mentioned moments ago. You know, the heart rates are up, and maybe she's kind of saving her energy. No, uh, come on. I think it's a judge. I think Rosenthal was right. Yeah, come yeah. on. Yeah. For all the ones I can't see, yeah, I, pinky I, is nearly broken. I'm so <laughs> bad. I'm so bad at making the call that I've decided I just start watching their reactions. I can usually tell more from their really? reactions than I can from the call. It's true. It's I really mean, I sad. Fought, felt like I was a really good liar. <laughs> call is reversed. Mm -hmm. It was a touch. And the smile on Alicia Childress's yeah. face. She's like, ah, oh, man, they caught me. I can't lie in front of my kids. That's right. That's yeah. right. Her kids are in the stands. She's got to be honest. Team Hans is only five away from their magic number of 19. Being able to win the overall. Beautiful by Augusto. That was tough. Molly McCage, long limbs, great. Got it. Okay, setter. <laughs> I feel like I feel like a setter kill should be worth 50 points. Yes, she went right back to the slide two times in a row, which means Molly McKay just stuck over at the right pin and that overpass right up to the middle of the court. No one home but Alicia Childress. Guess what? No problem. There's so many changes in the leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Edmund De La Cruz and Hans all playing now. Hilly and Chausse done. So it'll be interesting to see if the top spot still belongs to Hilly at the end because again, we still got 100 points on the table. Yes, you have to think when those win points, both this set and the aggregate and some MVP points are added in there that we're gonna see some maybe new leaders. Nona Villar off the block. Valentine Anderson goes back again. Childress. Oh, a connection issue and nobody able to pick it up. There's one thing about Leah Edmond. If she's going to miss, she's going to miss because she's going so hard. That's good There's point. no in-between. She just goes after it, doesn't she? Yep. And when she says in that vignette we saw, if I'm being honest, I want to win. Right. Absolutely be of honest. Of course. We're professional athletes. She wants to win. The champion from last season is Betty De La Cruz. Morgan Hentz. Another great dig. And Team Hentz has Betty De La Cruz up front now. They always have that blocking mismatch. It didn't look like a mismatch there. Outside again. Katie Lukes is having a day. And you know, a little fist pump because the coverage by Velez Augusto there on the outside to keep that rally alive is something 
that is just overlooked, I feel like, at times. That is such a hard reaction play. And she kept that going for her team. Got Luke's another swing. Luke's may be headed for a double, double, 10 kills and eight digs. Team Edmund right, gives that one away. Team Hans is only three points away from the aggregate score. Now, if Team Edmund wins this set, they get 40 points. Mm -hmm. If Team Hans wins the aggregate, they get 60. But if Team Edmund is able to win both the set and the aggregate, that's an extra 100 points for each player. Nana Biller. She has so many skills. She really, I mean, she does. And just coming right down the middle of the court, you don't know which corner she's going to swing for. You know, it's it's really only one block up. That's a whole lot of empty net for Brooke Nana Biller. I've never asked her if she can set, but I bet she can. Yeah, oh, I have no doubt. Pass is perfect. Great dig. Betty De La Cruz and Edmund digs it. Look at Jenna Rosenthal, the middle blocker, laying out on the dig. Yeah, we don't expect that. Meanwhile, Augusto big. Jenna Rosenthal handles another in the back row. Wow. Zaskia Hippa off the block. Team Hens one point away from winning the aggregate from that magic number. Wow, look at Jenna Rosenthal, all in on defense. Velez Augusto answers with a big defensive move. These players, every point is valuable. That's what I love about that aggregate score. They play like every point is valuable because it is. None of it. And with that kill, Morgan Hentz's team will get the 60 win points. Valentin Anderson has Betty De La Cruz in left front and twice we've seen her go to Nunaviller out of the back row. That tells you how well Brooke Nunaviller is playing right now. Choosing that Bick right down the middle and twice now we've seen Brooke Nunaviller cash it in. Against an incredibly formidable block. Yes. Timeout called, everybody catching their breath. Nunaviller with a double-double, 14 kills, 13 digs. And you see the facilitator, Dave yes. Rubio. Yes, Dave Rubio. I'm starting to think maybe he's the X Factor here at AU. His team immensely successful last weekend. And now here he is with his hands in the mix here with Team Hints, and they seem to be quite successful. So he's got something going for sure. Yeah, and one of the players on his team right now is Jenna Rosenthal, a middle who has been incredibly impactful. Yeah, we just saw moments ago the great defense out of the backcourt, which we don't expect from our middles, but maybe we should when they're as athletic as Jenna Rosenthal because she is an absolute force at the net, can hit behind as probably better than in front, quite honestly. So comfortable off one foot, but I don't know. Here she comes with the front row attack as well, and she has proven herself to be a great blocker in this league. Dave Rubio that you were talking about, the facilitator for this team, Co he was the coach of Arizona, of course, for many years, over 30 years. And he coached against Nunaviller and against Hens and against Van Der Weide. And he said, just, it's so fun to have them together. Meanwhile, Katie Lukes for wow. Team Edmund has been a go-to player late in this match. You know, we have a lot of experienced players in this league who know each other from years prior. And Katie Lukes is a new face. And I think she's really had to prove herself. But boy, the way she's playing now, her name will be a known name on draft day. She is showing opponents what she's made of. As you mentioned, it's somewhat of a unique swing. It's a fast ball. She has a low arm swing, and then her arm just comes through so incredibly fast. Lots of credit to Alicia Childress, though, for putting her in comfortable situations. Luke's with 10 kills and nine digs. Key, how are you liking this? Fantastic match so far. Obviously, it's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball, but I just went over, as I saw Dave Rubio talking to Nachi, I said, hey, what are you telling her right now? He said, hey, we're looking at the set distribution right now. It's so important that Nachi chooses the right ball in the right moment. So he said, maybe that last one, Betty was on the floor, didn't have a full approach to make. She maybe could have set pipe in that option. That would have been a better thing to do. But basically, he was just talking to her about if a player doesn't have an approach, or if they do, that's the moment to choose it. Right, and Pipe, she's talking about that, what we would call a Bic, too, for Morgan Hens, depending on the height of the, or for uh, Brooke Nunderviller, mm -hmm. depending on the height of the set. 
This time, Betty's up and ready. And it's a kill. The offense just keeps coming. You just feel like there are so many options right now with the way Brooke Nunaviller is swinging. Obviously, the arm of Betty, one of the best in the game. Team Hens right now looking like they can walk out of this with 140 team points. And stronger and stronger. Emma Willis down the middle. This has been a complete team effort yes. for Hens. I really have to say. Contributions all the way around. Emma Willis right there in the middle doing her job. Beautiful pass. Yeah. Leah's mad. And the same result. When Leah's yes. mad, same result. Such a fast ball to the outside. You can just tell that she and Childress are very comfortable together. The connection is on point time and time again. It is a fast ball. Look how much hole there is in that block. And as we've mentioned, these are elite blockers. Like they have the ability to close, but good luck catching up with that. The higher set to Betty. What pretty hands oh, from Fanny. Oh, Fanny. Okay, there. The middle blockers in this game have got touch, they've got defense, they've got finesse. The back set from Fanning. She's just showing off now. No kidding. Edmund could really, Team Edmund could really use these set points because they will not get the aggregate points at this point. Outside, Betty De La Cruz, that's a big block. Molly McCage going coast to coast. Leah Edmond on top of it. Great play by Team Edmond to tie this up. They really want they, these, they need set, these points. set points. And I think it's so important that you mentioned it. it's, it's from antenna to antenna for Molly McCage. Oh, the yeah. work she is putting in. And then to have the disciplined hands at the end of traveling that, way, that far. 21 all. Current top five. Edmund sits Ooh. at 1364. She's getting 40 points from set two, which she got already. And then she could get another 40 points from this, and that would push her into the lead. And De La Cruz and Hens, even if they don't win this set, will have 100 coming from, from, or excuse me, they already have 40. They'll have 60 more coming from the aggregate. So the 40 from set one have already been added to the leaderboard. Yeah, ma math is hard, <laughs> but we're getting it. Tomorrow, we're going to be right back here yeah. at the same time, 7 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN Plus, Team Hilly versus Team Hence. That's going to be interesting. Two very successful teams this week. And then at 9.30 Eastern time on ESPNU, Team Linehan is going to try to get it together versus Team Edmund. Edmund. And Leah Edmund, it's been so fun to watch. Yeah, Linehan versus Edmund, they played together last week. They're both former uh, teammates at Kentucky, so that's a lot of fun. And let's take a look at one of those former Kentucky players, Leah Edmund, who is the only player to come into this second week as a returning captain. And boy, is she playing like it. She has so much firepower, pop on her swing. But I really like the fact that when teams go at her in service, she does not back away. She steps in there, steps up. She's a real leader. She's a player that looks very comfortable in the captain position. And everybody who is a captain this week was on the yes. team with Edmund last week. Betty De La Cruz crushing kill key. This is so intense. It is so intense, but I was listening into the gold timeout because I wanted to hear what was going on there. It was actually pretty quiet. Nothing much to say. Leah came in just at the end and said, we're taking this set. It is ours. But what I noticed is she always goes over to her setter. She's got Alicia Childress, Olympic medalist. So they're always talking off to the side, trying to figure out what to do to go forward. And Maybe it like it Whatever it is, they're doing something right. That was a quick tempo. Maybe that's what she was whispering. Hey, you know what, Lee? Set me. Yes. And set me again. And I don't disagree with that, Missy. Not at all. Not at all. Not the way she is playing right here. You know, you've got, I think it's just wise on the part of Leah Edmond. She has an Olympian on her team. Lean into the wisdom and the experience of the people around you, 100%. And Alicia has a player who plays best when down and insulted. Yes. And that's what's happening that's with Leah That's when you set her. That's right. Nunaviller. Great dig by Lukes. 
Full swing. Going back to Zaskia Hippa. Oh, and there is a touch. touch. Luke's doing a nice job of staying deep on that inline, though. And oh, yeah. Man, just such a nice job. Team Hens serving, trying to get themselves to set point. Willis goes deep. Luke's handles it. Everybody knows it's going to Leah. I mean, I could just have an ISO on her face. I want her to wear a GoPro that faces back at her face. Unfortunately, she's rotated to the back row. I don't think that matters that I think much. they'll set her out of the back yeah. court, and I think she'll be just fine. That last shot there, the sharp angle, is really her favorite shot a weekend ago. We've yeah. seen a lot of line out of her, I feel like, this weekend. But boy, last weekend, you just thought there was no more angle for it to be had, and Leah would somehow find it. It was just incredible. You know what else, though? With Childress up front, I feel like they're going to go to McCage behind. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what that looks mm -hmm. like. She's got Brooke Nunnevelli there. She's got a height advantage on her. Just matters if the pass is good enough. And you got to close the block. Uh, Team Edmund, that set point. That pesky Brooke Nunnevelli will get in there and find that hole in the block, won't she? I love an underestimated Brooke Nunnevelli, and I feel like because of her lack of length, she has been underestimated throughout her career. Yes. Morgan Hans, when she picked her set, she's going to have a breakout week. She knows her personnel. This That's is for right. the set. <laughs> None of Eller uses the block <laughs> to finish. Team Hens wins two of the three and the aggregate points. What a great matchup. These teams battled till the very end. This one was a lot of fun. After this performance from Team Henson set one, it looked like it could be a runaway. But I love it when these teams tend to reflect their captain. And Leah Edmond is absolutely no quitter. She is a fighter. And this team fought to the very end. The arm of Edmond, a lot to deal with. But I'll tell you what, Brooke Nunnaviller, probably the offensive star for Team Henson. Absolutely. Double-double today, 16 kills and 13 digs. She's receiving a lot of balls as well. Wonder, will she be an MVP? Uh, how is she not? I don't know. How is she not? I look forward to seeing the votes. We talk so much about the defense of Team Hens because of who Morgan Hens is and the type of players that she drafted, but their offense is just as good, just as good. Taking a look at our top five leaderboard, Betty De La Cruz jumps with these team points. Morgan Hentz jumps to second. Sydney Hilly third. Leah Edmond hanging on to fourth. Those team points really make big time movement. And what excites me is that we have a setter and a libero in the top four. I just think that's great for the game. It is excellent for the game. And let's go over to Key. Because I want to hear about the end of that match. Guys, that was that was an incredible matchup. Were you expecting this? Let's start with you, Nati. Were you expecting that kind of defense, I guess, out of that team? Definitely. I think that team has a lot of people with experience and um, just people that want to win. And we knew it was going to be a, a hard match. And Brooke, you tied up with Betty for top score. That in itself is a huge accomplishment. Did it feel like you were contributing that much in the offense as it was going? You got a little, you're a little sweaty, I think oh, so. A little, oh my gosh. Honestly, like Nati and I have been working on our connection for now two weeks. And like the way she's running the ball and just feeding me in like crucial moments, getting me really good looks on the block. I just feel like it makes it a lot easier when you have someone that's just so aggressive and pushing you, you know, just to score. And I feel like you have a super, you run a super balanced offense, but you're scoring points from points from everywhere. I mean, obviously you're getting points in the set, you're getting some blocks, also your aces and your serves. We talked about it a little bit. I did a little serving 101 on the board, but can you tell me what you're thinking about before you serve? Um, honestly, pretty much all um, technique, you know? I think when the match is that tight, you don't want to just serve a lollipop, <laughs> or also you want to keep your the ball in place, so it's like a medium serve. So I go with technique in those moments and very strategic. And I think we did pretty well with that tonight. So if one of you becomes captains next week, what's your team going to look like? 
I don't know. I love our team. I mean, the scrap that we have this week, like it's insane playing next to Nati and Morgan. It's so much fun behind just this block and then just the arms we have. It's just insane. So, I mean, if we could get a good balance between offense and defense, I feel like that's always the key. We well, kind of want to stay together, <laughs> but it's impossible out of you. <laughs> we'll put in a good word. We'll put in a good word. Well, thank you so much, you guys, uh, and congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Anne-Marie. It was thrilling. Let's listen in to that final play for Team Hints. Are big smiles and Missy I have a problem for them they are not going to stay together no they're not but interestingly I do love the fact that Brooke pointed out this is her second weekend in a row with Nati mm -hmm. and boy the dividends doesn't that pay off so we'll have to see even though they're going to split up some of those little key pieces that stay together start to really have success down the road well hope you join us tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern Team Hilly who won earlier facing Team Hence that's how we're going to start our day Team Hence wins this one for Key Michael and Missy Whittemore, I'm Anne Marie Anderson. Monday, Athletes Unlimited Volleyball continues. A doubleheader, 7 o'clock Eastern is the first one. Once again, our final score, Team Hentz wins 73 to 64. Rest up, hydrate, and we'll meet you back here tomorrow. <laughs>